So, a few uh, other spots, a few other spots later, and we found a better drainage line. Um, hopefully, I'm sure this time we'll probably succeed with water. Um, I've been in this area before and I've dug here already for water before. Um, not this exact spot, but um, close by to it. So I'm pretty hopeful on this one. The other two we can use as part of like reconnaissance. See if, uh, so now we know it's not, not good water sources. So let's see. This is the deepest hole I've dug for a long time for water. <laughs> well, now that's water we can use. So there's a few animals that will use these kind of tributaries um, to move from like grazing or from one water source to another. Uh, and it looks here at the moment that some hippos have been moving up and down here. You can see here by the track of a very small hippo over here, so there would be a big, bigger hippo, the mother, and the mum with the baby walking behind. It's one toe, two toe, three toe, and the fourth toe, and them having a b smooth heel walking along this river here. And along on either side of these rivers is very, very nice green, green grass, and that's predominantly what these, these hippos are eating. And the hippos will also eat this kind of grass over here, this kind of vegetation, they'll eat this, which is nice and lush. And other animals come here for water, not only us. And if you look here, there's tracks of a, what looks like a, maybe a female leopard. You can see by the one toe, two toe, three and four toe, and the back heel. The reason why I say a female and not a male is the fact that this ground is very soft. So they, the tracks tend to splay out a bit more, which gives it the appearance of a very large track. So it's fooling us to, to believe that it is a much larger track, but it's actually not. It's actually a smaller track with very soft ground. Right, but another, uh, let's finish up with our track and sign and let's, uh, let's dig and uh, filter some water. Now in this instance, we don't have to dig for very long to get the water because all of this is basically saturated with water. But what's nice about this is that it's got all the sand to filter the water and make it clean. So we are using Nice natural filter. So luckily this is not a particularly long job like the other one. Still takes time to filter. This won't take too long in comparison to the other time. You know, like we had this with me uh, while before doing the walk. And um, this is actually a good way there's always trash that gets caught up in these rivers and these drainage lines due to flooding. And a good way, or you could actually use these to your advantage in a survival instance or just a way of just recycling um, stuff you find in the bush. Whoopsie, good catch. And actually, what you can actually use this as well for is you can actually create your own filter so you can take some of the sand you can go look for uh, rocks uh, in the area you can go look for uh, wild cotton 
and you would build your own filter in this top top half of the bottle and put it in like that and you take your dirty water and you put it in there and let it filter through that into your small cup but in this instance that's not what we're going to do maybe another time but right now I'm gonna get comfortable and I'm gonna start filtering and taking out the sand out this water and this is the long tedious job but well worth it because this water is not only going to be clean but it's going to be cold while we wait for the water to filter back up just to fill up again you know when you find very very good water sources like this on trail makes living on trail way way more comfortable because you have a a very very good water supply where you can make a very very well used well and what you can also do is you can go walking in the bush and you can find uh, stumps big uh, kind of nice smooth rocks or any rock for that matter and you can line this hole with rocks and that's to stop this sand on the edges to fall in because when you build make your camp which would be further up the embankment here you'd have constantly people coming down and gathering water and you know accidents happen and people you know, fall in and then you got to re-dig and re-filter all the sand so it's a good idea to layer it all with rocks but then at the end and when you're finished with your camp and you're finished uh, kind of camping in that area you come back you remove and throw all the rocks away into the bush randomly and then you would fill, cover up the hole here so it's you you give the impression that lock no one has ever been here before and as you can already see this water is becoming clearer you can see the bottom of the pond And at the moment, the water is now drinkable. Perfectly clean, perfectly safe, full of minerals and goodiness. And that is it. so tasty I love it you know so now with this water dug and we can see it's clear and we've we've drank it and it's delicious you know when you're camping out here on these backpack trails or primitive trails or just camping out in general you know this water hole here that we've dug here is not only for um, drinking but it's for bathing because at the end of a long day of walking and sweating in the area you want to at least come home and you know bath and and i'll tell you one thing by bathing and just just by this little puddle of water and being able to clean yourself and you know feel a little fresher it's it's like you feel like a million bucks you feel so good after this what I love about it at the moment is that it's really hot today and it's very very cold mm. lovely well that's it for the video I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that uh, if you want to see more please leave a comment and uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this whole experience of ours but for now that's the end Take care and cheers. Mm -hmm.